sometimes I get like I like like get aware that I'm just like I, I'm just like aware of things. I'm just like like there's things passing by, but the the awareness is just there. It's just like kind of like it's mm-hmm. like it's like always like just like being aware of things. Mm-hmm. I just find it weird that that's what we're like. That's what you're trying to like look for. Hmm. Does that make sense what I'm saying or no? That's it seems to be an ironic and strange situation because it's always so immediate and if you were seeing things clearly it should have been obvious. Yeah. But but what is so close seems to be so far, far apart, dimensions apart, just simply because of the mental hindrances that are covering this experience. Yeah, but the so that's why what we're really concerned of here in the spiritual process is a gradual mental purification so that what is already imminent mm-hmm. becomes much more concrete and crystal clear in your perception. So you're just like removing the, the dirt? Kind of it's a that. bit like this, for instance. We are in a room. This, not, this room is not a very good example because it's not crowded with furniture. Mm-hmm. But assume you are in a room that's loaded, crowded with furniture. Mm-hmm. The sense of the empty space which pervades the whole room is not as distinct as clear when your eyes are so focused upon that furniture. So, how will it become more apparent, or one way that it can become more apparent, is to simply subtract all the furniture. And that's precisely what happens in meditation when we are bringing the mind to a gradual stillness. You are subtracting mental impressions so that the vastness of the awareness that's already there starts shining through your perception. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So mental stillness, it's not, an, it's not a necessity. There is no cosmic rule that says that stillness of mind equates with enlightenment. However, it may facilitate enlightenment or seeing into your true nature because of this fact that you have less of the mental cluttering. Mm -hmm. So through stillness of mind, discover what's left, what remains when all activity has ceased. And the same principle can be applied not just to the mind, can be applied to many things. If you want to ever discover something that's most essential, Subtract whatever can be subtracted until you discover something else which can neither be added nor subtracted. So right now in this room we may have gotten rid of all the furniture and the different objects of experience. But what is it we can't get rid of? The empty space. No amount of effort Mm -hmm. will make any difference. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So the empty space must be more essential and Especially because it's on account of the emptiness that it's capable of such fullness. It's on account of the emptiness of this cup that it's capable of such mm-hmm. holding any type of fullness. But, but these things are only relevant if you're, if you're aware of it. Yes, the key. That is the master key. So it's only, I mean, like, like I'm excluding any, like, like intelligent life form that we don't know about, but, but it's only relevant to us humans. Correct. Because like there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing significant about it. I mean, there is, but there's nothing like, it's like you said with the animals and stuff, they, they can enter into uh, samadhi, but for them it's not, they can't reflect upon it, so it's not. And the reason why they can't reflect upon it is because their intellect is not developed enough. Because their intellect is not developed enough, the significance of the experience is irrelevant to them. Mm -hmm. And because of the lack of the strength of the intellect, the the memory of that experience also seems to have very little relevance. Mm -hmm. However, it does have a certain relevance where even if by accident they stumble upon that experience, even the memory of it will continue to have a lingering influence on the mind. The only problem is that because they don't have enough of a developed intellect, their life is largely dominated by instinct. Mm -hmm. This is the problem. Our lives need not be dominated by instinct. 
For most people, unfortunately, they are. This is one of the conflicts of the world that we have inherited a mind and body, an ancient system with barbaric impulses, mm -hmm. which for centuries we still have not overcome. Yet at the same time, there is a more evolved intelligence that's pointing in another direction that gives you that, this opportunity to understand that if necessary, and if you invest the amount of the t energy that's needed, it's possible to rise in awareness beyond all of these compulsive influences. So um, this is the reason why we don't see any animals practicing yoga. But, okay, for, for like meditation, for like anapanasati, um, so essentially what you're doing is that you're kind of like, you're tricking your body, your mind to go to sleep, but remain that, that awareness. That's what you, that's kind of... Uh, you're tricking, well, if you want to use that word, tricking. Not tricking what you're tricking. doing is, in both cases, in sleep and the movement towards samadhi, there is a systematic shutdown of the mind and the five senses, mm -hmm. gradually, over time. The same systematic shutdown happens every night, without mm -hmm. exception. It's not an unusual or unique experience. But you want to, along with that systematic shutdown, insert a continuous current of awareness. Yeah, and like, remember you said that there's... This is, by the way, I say systematic shutdown only because that might facilitate seeing into the nature of your mind. But don't think that this breakthrough of seeing into the real nature of your mind has to be limited to bringing the mind to a stillness. No, but, but you know how you said that in between the states, if mm -hmm. you could insert your awareness there, you could experience uh, samadhi? But when, you, when you're doing the meditation, isn't that what you're, you're doing? You're, you're inserting your awareness and then you're... Like eventually your, your mind will fall into that state, right? Correct. And if you're, since you're trying to like... And it will become a habitual. This is what happens. First, when you initiate an effort for concentration, mm -hmm. you're just getting the ball rolling. But the problem is that to get the ball rolling in such a way that it becomes not... It becomes an automatic force, but not a mechanical one. Mm -hmm. You're not lost in mental hindrances. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Like when you're meditating. Like you mm -hmm. want your mind almost to drift into sleep. You don't want anything in particular. Okay. No, yeah, okay. But how do you then, like... If it happens and you drift off into... Not into sleep, the mind becomes deactivated. Mm -hmm. The mind becomes asleep, but you don't fall asleep. Yeah. But you kind of have to force it. You can't just like, expect it to happen. It will happen as a side effect through this one-pointed concentration, and when it ever happens, if it happens, it will be, or it will happen without warning. It will happen suddenly oh, yeah? in a condition of least expectation, because when you're so one-pointed and concentrated, really? okay. everything else in the universe becomes irrelevant. The only thing that's relevant is the here and the now, and I'm trying to give you some sort of flavor or sense of what it means to be truly in the midst of the here and the now. Mm -hmm. In a way, time becomes irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Past is irrelevant. Future is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. The now even is irrelevant because you're not clinging to the now either. Mm -hmm. So it's really a very intense, creative sort of condition. Mm -hmm. It's a type of creativity which very few people know because most of the creativity that is known in human life is a creativity that's always accompanied by the feeling of egotism. Yeah. This is a tremendous creativity but unaccompanied by that egotism. So you shouldn't even think of this creative as a personal creativity. You've become a vessel. A vessel for that cosmic creativity. So if that becomes a living experience then time will become irrelevant. And that's when you really your practice has reached to a certain height. That's precisely what in Zen they're referring to as shikantaza, just sitting.